The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard. Our neighbors, our schools, the places we go, and the people we know. And now there's one news outlet where our story is told. Delaware Live. Locally owned community-based news. Free to every reader. Because Delaware's future belongs to all of us. Quality journalism we can trust to help us take on the day. Delaware Live. Our state. Our news. Our home. Terrell Moses, of course, Kevin Turner is the athletic director here at High, Dover High and did a great job getting us set up here tonight. The assistant coaches for Sussex Central and Sean Hopkins are Jesse Long, Leroy Mann, Jerry Peden, DJ Long, Cody White, and Dante Sturgis. Now let's talk about the Dover Senators. And really, when you talk about D High, you're talking about Jaheim Harrell. He can take over a ball game. He can light it up from outside. He's a clutch shooter. He's the kind of kid that wants the ball in pressure situations. He's been doing it since he was a young freshman here at Dover High School. And you're right, Glenn. He, he is a clutch player. He is a type of play. He's got the, you know, and this doesn't get thrown around very often, so I got to be careful with saying this, but he's got like that Mamba mentality in him yeah. where he wants the ball in his hands to make plays, and he a lot of times delivers when the ball is in his hands. Uh, he's a special player for sure. You know, they, they've got a couple, like you said, a couple of key departures, you know, with the Amir Height no right. longer there, Tyrone Tulsa no longer there due to transferring out. Yeah. A couple other guys have had to step up and, and make plays for them. Denim Perkins being one of them. The 5'9 junior point guard, he has stepped up and made some big-time contributions for this team. And, of course, they got some other guys on this team as well that can get the job done, a little bit of size. A couple guys coming in um, with Norwood is, uh, as well as, you know, Kendall Abrams, 6'5", 6'6", kind of players making big-time contributions. Yeah, you mentioned Perkins, the junior guard for the Senators. He scored 20 points when Dover rallied to beat Cape Henlopen. And he had a career-high 11 rebounds against Caesar Rodney. For the season, Perkins is averaging 17 points, 6 assists, 5 steals, and 4 rebounds per game, all the while shooting 46% from the floor. So he's a great complement to the scoring of Jaheim Harrell. He is, and that's what Dover's going to need. You know, we, we ran into Coach Wilson down at the slam dunk to the beach, spoke with him briefly, and... Yeah, he feels that his team's going to start coming into their own here as the season goes on. I said, again, new group, guys in new uh, roles yeah. on this team. And it's a growing process. And let's see if Dover can get that squared away and figured out as this season progresses. We're just uh, probably just a couple of minutes away from opening tip-off here at Dover High School. The officiating crew for tonight's ball game: Maurice Parker, Dante Bailey, and John Forrest. And uh, happy to have the Dover High pep band here in the background as well as you can hear them. 
part of the marching band that does a terrific job year in and year out. And uh, Pat and I were both uh, thrilled to hear them use and feature the music of EWF, Earth, Wind, and Fire, during the football season. They do a fantastic job, and I'm sure we're going to hear some more of that music in the background during the game tonight. Well, they heard a little bit during pregame, and you know it's appropriate. Unfortunately, well, there's an unfortunate note. One of their, their drummer just passed away this week here, Glenn. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. I, That's I, a shame. I don't have the name off the top of my head. But, yeah, always always a big fan of that. And it's good music, man. It's good. This band, yeah. they, they're the real deal. No doubt about it. Looks like they're preparing for the national anthem. Let's take a look at the starters for today's game, beginning with the uh, Dover Senators. Starting will be Denham Perkins, as we just talked about him. Also, Nassim Cosme. You'll remember him from the football season and the team that went all the way to the championship game. He was the starting quarterback. Also starting is Tayshawn Allen, a sophomore, and he's 6'5", 190 as a sophomore. Jaheim Harrell, the senior, 6'2", 195. And then Jaden Meek, a 6'5", 212-pound freshman. Mm -hmm. Good size there and youth on the board there and starting for the Dover Senators. For Sussex Central, their starters, number one, David Maker. He's a sophomore point guard. Also number 10, Brandon Spencer, another sophomore. Along with him on the starting floor is other side. Oh, you're right, you're right, right. J Jameel Watson, we did get David Maker. Number five is Byron Knox, and kind of blocked that a little 13. bit by the backboard. Number 13 is Clarence McBride Allen, a junior center. And finally, rounding out the starting five for the Golden Knights, Kyle Custis, a junior forward. Yeah, and you know, Glenn, we, we kind of kind of got cut off during our broadcast and talking a little bit about Sussex Central. So just to reiterate, oh, okay. I mean, a four and one team, kind of the new, the new kids on the block. I, I feel like this potential season under head coach Sean Hopkins, looking to um, you know kind of establish himself as a basketball program. A lot of great underclass talent. We'll get into them as the broadcast goes on. We'll highlight them as they go. One of them in the starting lineup yeah. being David Maker, but really exciting group. Excited to see what they have against the tough Dover team. All right, we're going to step aside for the National Anthem. Be back with the opening tip of tonight's ball game. The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard. Our neighbors, our schools, the places we go, and the people we know. And now there's one news outlet where our story is told. Delaware Live. Locally owned community based news, free to every reader, because Delaware's future belongs to all of us. Quality journalism we can trust to help us take on the day. Delaware Live, our state, our news, our home. Get the assurance that your HVAC system is what you need with Ambience. Ambience provides you with over 25 years of experience in the heating, cooling, and plumbing industry. The team at Ambience Heating and Air Conditioning provides high-quality residential HVAC installations, maintenance, and repairs in new and older homes in the Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Tri-State area. You may not realize it, but half of your energy costs go to heating and cooling. Make sure your energy dollars count and call us today for a free estimate. 302-239-HVAC. 302 Two two three nine four eight two two. Hi, I'm Scott Cameron from Solo Concepts. Today we're at Fish On in the Villages of Five Points. Come check us out. Fish On is committed to serving beautiful, simple coastal cuisine in a cool atmosphere with a happening bar, spacious dining room, and outside patio. Popular dishes include the seafood stew and fresh oysters from the raw bar. Fish On's recently renovated event room and is the perfect spot for your next event. Fish On and Lois in the Villages of Five Points open seven days a week, best happy hour around. See you soon. Melissa Ellis is part of Four Acre Realty Company. She is licensed in both Delaware and Pennsylvania. Melissa knows that being personable and patient is a key to her success as a realtor. Helping both buyers and sellers understand current market values and conditions puts them in the best position when making an offer or pricing a home for sale. That kind of high-level professional communication. Fine rendition of our national anthem performed by the Dover High School Pep Band in the gym here tonight. Pretty good crowd behind us and uh, both ends of the floor behind the backboards as this Henlope and North matchup between Dover and Sussex Central, both coming in in the division with a 2-1 and one record. Dover overall is 4-3. and three. They lost to Middletown by 10 points to start out the season. Got a win over Kings Christian Academy out of Maryland. Beat Cape Henlopen and Cesar Rodney. Lost to Polytech 
Polytech having a real good start to the year and one of the premier teams in the Henlopen North this year looking to make the playoffs. It was first time in a long time they've beaten Dover as well. Exactly. And then in the Governor's Challenge, a 71-54 win for Dover over Stephen Decatur. And then Wyhai, one of the best teams on the Eastern Shore of Maryland, they battled Dover right to the end of the game, and Dover just fell short in that one. That was their last ball game. Once again, Sussex Central comes in riding a four-game winning streak. They lost to Cape to start out the season. Then they won four straight, including two in the Governor's Challenge down near Salisbury, Maryland, and that was their last game on December 27th. In that two-game tournament, they scored 145 points. Ready for the opening tip. Dover in the home whites, the Golden Knights in the blues. And the Golden Knights control the opening tip, moving from our left to our right. This is David Maker, one of the impressive members of the sophomore class for the Knights kicking this one off. Strong move to the bucket by Custis, but he missed the shot. However, the Golden Knights get a second chance opportunity, and we've got a whistle inside, and an offensive foul will go against Sussex Central. Interesting. They, they, I believe they call uh, they call Maker on yeah. the push off. He's going to want to be careful. Obviously, don't want to get in too much of foul trouble starting point guard for Sussex Central. And off the bench, there's going to be some firepower with uh, with Philip Dowdy and sophomore as well. He, he dropped 37 in that last game, Glenn, that you talked that you alluded to. Yeah. In the Governor's Challenge, including nine threes. Looks like uh, Sussex Central going with a zone. Uh, they're switching out a little bit. It looked like it started out as a 3-2. Out high with the ball is per Perkins. Kind of packing in man-to-man. -man. Now Harrell trying to break down the defender. He penetrates, kicks it out. Perkins makes a move. No shot clock in Delaware High School basketball. Nice dish off in the paint. Couldn't get the shot off, though. Strong penetration by Perkins. Lays it off, and the one-hander goes in by Meek. That's really good ball movement right there from Dover. I like seeing them share the basketball, trying to get a, a great setup, and right away in transition, Central puts up a shot. But that offensive possession by Dover was really well done, especially with no shot clock. You can afford to take these kind of slow approaches. And there you go, Jaheim Harrell with the deep shot from the right wing. Kid's dangerous, Glenn. He's one of the top players in the state of Delaware. Was an all-state, I believe, um, uh, player last season for Dover. Playing a higher role this season. Golden Knights get on the board there. Nice dribble penetration. And that was Knox. A good drive by Knox. The Knights, they're not bashful. They've come out and put up shots early in the shot clock. Not wasting any time here on the road. Oh, almost a Yeah, walk. and I think uh, Sean Hopkins, the coach for Sussex Central, wanted that call, but instead a missed shot. Coming out of there was number four, Watson. Oh, boy. The officials did not say it. That means it's going to be a jump. Yeah. They did not see it. Yeah, I think uh, one official thought they were going to bring the ball up the floor rather easily, and he kind of just turned his back for a moment. So far, Dover with good ball movement. And Sussex Central has been really beating the defense down the floor and getting layups, Pat, but they haven't been able to finish until that last attempt. You are correct, Glenn. And here you go. Now you see that zone that you alluded to. Harrell almost pulled the trigger there. Perkins, good pass inside. Finds number 23, Tayshawn Allen, but a good block by the Golden Knights. Yeah, that's a great job. That's McBride Allen down low. Using his length, staying on his feet, getting the block. Little Euro step inside by Maker had his shot attempt blocked. Action is fast and furious here in the opening moments. Another miss, but a second chance opportunity. That shot up no good, but somebody's going to the free throw line for the Golden Knights. It's going to be Custis. I like the effort on the offensive glass from the Golden Knights. Offensively, they seem to be a little bit too too amped right now though. I like to see them slow down, play within themselves a little bit. There seems to be kind of a, a herky-jerky quick approach offensively, just throwing shots up at the rim instead of working their offense. It's one adjustment they can make early, but the energy's there and that's something that you're gonna have to have in any game. That's always something you can control is your energy level. And right now, it's there for the Knights. Both teams with one personal foul here early in the game. And it's a 5-4 lead for Dover as both free throws were made by Kyle Custis. 
One point ball game, five minutes to go in the opening quarter. Again, good ball movement by Dover. Left wing three ball up by Harrell. That rattles out. And a rebound on the defensive board. Even when he misses, it looks good, Glenn. I mean, he, he's developed his game through the years. He's always been stocky built. Look at Oh, look what at a this. steal. Great hands by Harrell. Throws it down the floor looking for Perkins. He caught it but was too far under the basket to get a good look. Good idea. Just a little too far out in front. Cross-court pass, left wing three-point shot on the way. That's too strong, no good. And getting the rebound is Dover. Here's Harrell with the ball. All the way in, puts up a floater off the window. He kisses it, and it's good, but they're going to call the foul on him. That's a tough one. That's a tough one right there. I thought he did a good job on the Euro. Yeah. But you got to give credit where credit's due. Watson was back and in position, and they, they call the offensive foul on Jaheim Harrell. And we've got a timeout on the floor. We're going to keep it right here, a one-point game. And I said that it's really a fast-paced game so far. That's what we're used to here in the Henlope and North. Yeah, it's been it's been breakneck so far. Dover seems to be playing with a little more. They seem to they seem to be playing within themselves, playing fast. There's a difference between playing uh, fast and playing rushed. Mm -hmm. They're playing fast and in control right now. Central playing fast, a little bit out of control. Now they've they've made some laps. They had the foul and knocked down their foul shots, but. That's going to be something when they get in half court, got to slow down a little bit. I think if they're able to do that, they'll continue to stay in this game. Right now, Dover doing a good, doing a good job. Just a couple shots haven't fallen for them. Another key so far, I think, Pat, is Sussex Central's ability to control the rebounding. They're limiting to Dover to one and done on the defensive end, and then they've had at least three second-chance opportunities getting rebounds on the offensive side. Yeah, the, the energy's been there, Glenn, and you're right. The positioning, the boxing out. And, uh, you know, that, that's a testament to you know, the identity that they're trying to build under Coach Sean Hopkins. They're going to play hard, eh, clearly. Little backcourt pressure, and it worked. Very athletic move by Denham Perkins to get the steal. Back out on top. Perkins draws a double team, and then he dribbled it off of his foot. A three-on-one break. It didn't go, but then the, the put slam, the putback by number 13, McBride Allen. Nice work by McBride Allen coming down there. I'll tell you what, it looked like Maker was going to go up for the stuff, and he got caught halfway up there. But again, the Knights' energy level's there. They run the floor, and uh, and that's a, a great, great work by McBride Allen to be there to put the putback dunk up and in. One-point lead now for Sussex Central. High off the glass and good by Tayshawn Allen. That's nice there by Aaron. That's an offhand too, Glenn. That is extremely difficult. With the left hand, goes high off the glass, knocks it in. Dover gets the lead right back, seven to six. Again, that pressure in the backcourt almost caused another turnover. Yeah, nice, gotta be careful. Come down cleanly on two feet, then make that pass. That's a nice shot. Yeah, nice little J from just outside the free throw line by number four, Jamil Watson. And now we're trading the leads. Here we've had three lead changes in the last minute. Here's that zone you talked about, Glenn. It looked like they came out with zone, then they changed the man to man, and now they're back into that zone. So they're changing their defensive looks, trying to slow Dover down in that way. Well, so far hanging right with the Senators. Good pass inside, turnaround shot won't go down for Meek. And again, one and done for Dover. Look oh, this. look, a move. Can't get the shot to go down, but I love the move that time. It was, I mean, it, it, there's no fear, that's for sure. Three-point shot by Perkins. Missed it on the right side of the rim. Harrell did a great job to try to save it, but couldn't do so. Central wants, a one, wants to run every opportunity they have. Wow. Good left-handed lay-in by number one, David Maker, the sophomore. Nice work. How about that strong left-hand finish in the lane? Five Ooh. different players have scored for the Golden Knights, and they have the lead 10 to 7. They just created another turnover. Yeah, great energy and effort by the Golden Knights. And you know, Dover right now just a little bit out of a little, now they've gotten a little bit out of control. So nice work. And now checking into the game for us uh, for Sussex Central, Phil Dowdy, keep an eye on him, number three. Sophomore. And Cannon. Yep, Two more man. sophomores that can you know, really help this team out. Nazir Pierce and Kendall Abrams checked in for Dover. Both teams want to keep everybody fresh with this fast-paced game. Deep in the left corner, three ball on the way. That's good <laughs> by number three, Dowdy. We just talked about him, Pat. 
Nine threes in his last game. He comes right out and buries the first one. Nothing but net here tonight. And there's a basket coming back the other way for the Senators. I missed who it was. I think it was so Abrams. 11. Yep, Kendall Abrams. Nice work by Abrams. Four different players have scored for the Senator. Abrams got the rebound, but he ran right into his own player, and that created a turnover in the travel. We're down to a 1.22 to go in this fast-paced opening quarter, 13 to 9. The visitor's on top. We've got a little time out here, Pat. <laughs> we'll catch our breath here and kind of let everybody know what's going on here in our first game of 2023 in boys' high school basketball, and it's been up and down the floor. It has. It's been extremely fun to watch, Glenn. I, I mean, I think that you know, these are going to be two teams that we got to keep an eye on as this season progresses. You know, Dover, we kind of thought would be here as a team to keep an eye on. Sussex Central kind of in the we're, we're trying to prove ourselves stage right now. Got a nice win over Smyrna. Obviously did well in that Governor's Challenge. This is, this is the first kind of litmus test that we're seeing against a quality team in that we know of in Dover. And so far, early in this first quarter, They've stepped up to the challenge. And it's almost become the norm with Coach Wilson and the Dover Senators talk about them being right in the mix for the Henlopen North title and being in the tournament almost every year. But it's a new thing for Sussex Central. Last year, they only won two games all year. They've already doubled that win total with the four-game winning streak. Yeah, it's impressive. And again, young team, a lot of sophomores contributing. And there's a turnover there. Look, yeah. Was it tipped? They're going to say it was tipped. Really, I didn't think, I didn't see a tip. But the official under the bucket did say it was tip. So Pass was good. intended for number uh, 13, Clarence McBride Allen. Good size for that young man. Coach Hopkins calling out the play from the bench across the floor from us. Down close to a minute to go, opening half, or quarter. And there was an errant pass, but it was picked up. Jumper in the lane, too strong, no good. Rebound, Harrell released. He's going for the slam, and instead the defense was coming, and he used the rim in the reverse layup. Yeah, great job by Jaheim, just recognizing the defense is coming over and making sure to ensure that he got two points. Under 50 seconds to go in the quarter. It's a two-point game. Great hustle. <laughs> you all right, Glenn? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> good hustle right there. That was great work there by Clarence McBride. Allen selling out, making his way over to us. <laughs> knocking into the table. Ooh, almost lost my breath there, got winded. Caught one in the bread basket. Sorry, we're right here in the field of play, it seems like. <laughs> <laughs> Pass underneath, but I guess a little miscommunication there. Yeah, it didn't look like they were on the same page. <laughs> Jay Morell's looking at the official say, wasn't that one tipped? <laughs> 33 seconds to go opening quarter. Sussex Central on top by two, 13-11. Baseball pass down the floor. Cross court uh, pass, he was telegraphed, and Perkins stole it. Gets it on the wing. Perkins puts up the whoa. shot on the glass and good. Actually, the steal was by Pierce. Perkins ties the game with 10 seconds to go. Great work here by Dover to to go on a, a closeout run here to get them back in the game and another turnover off the pressure. Four seconds, they're gonna have to let it fly. Perkins gets his baseline jump shot. It'll be good if it goes, but it hit the backboard and the side of the rim. And what a first quarter here was. We're all tied at 13 all. Dover on a 5-0 run there to close it out to get the tie, Pat. Yeah, great work there again. Getting out of transition, the pressure seems to be forced to some turnovers, a little uneasiness. Um, easiness for Sussex Central, it's allowed Dover to creep back in this one tied up. All right, we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back after this for second quarter action here from Dover High. First State Orthopedics statewide has 29 physicians at 16 locations. Our physicians and staff provide both non-surgical as well as surgical treatment for almost all orthopedic conditions and injuries. We are specially trained in the current state-of-the-art techniques. We serve as team physician and orthopedic consultant for over 20 high schools, Wilmington University, and many local recreational and competitive leagues. 
Our doctors are readily available to the local emergency departments as well as medical aid units and urgent care centers for consultation and treatment. Call for an appointment today or visit us at firststateortho.com. Six different Golden Knight players scored in that first quarter. Five for Dover, led by Jaheim Harrell with five points. Both teams have hit one three-pointer. Harrell has one for Dover, and Dowdy came off the bench and nailed his first shot of the ball game. And you mentioned he just made nine in their last game in the Governor's Challenge win over Colonel Richardson. Give him ten now in two games. That's right, man. He's got the appropriate number on us. He just tosses the ball in right in front of us. The appropriate number for a shooter. <laughs> Uh oh, there he goes again, and he nailed it again. Wow, that was top of the circle. So two different spots on the floor. Drills it. I tell you what, a little bit unorthodox. Not not your traditional rotation, but boy, does he got the uh, the, the range down. Harrell will try one left wing, and his is good. There's the answer, and we're still tied. And, and Jaheim, I mean, he's developed that outside shot through his career here at Dover. There's another turnover. Ooh. Tell you what, Central's got to do a better job against this zone. They're not doing a good job of getting it in the middle. Right. The key against these zone defenses, Glenn, is to get the ball as close to half court as you can in the middle and then turn and look opposite to the streakers coming down the side of the lane. They haven't done that enough in this one. They're kind of getting themselves stuck in trap areas. We're tied at 16, there and there's a travel. Right placement. Yeah. Now, now right there, that comes down to Custis keeping his pivot foot down turning and looking opposite right away. Not looking to do too much. He kind of got revved up and was looking to go uh, before you know he was truly ready. And they kind of thought, kind of stopped himself, like, oh, I'm supposed to look opposite. And that kind of got him stuck in the middle yep. for the turnover. Got caught in no man's land. Pass underneath the meat. Back out on top to Perkins. Zone defense. Right wing, three ball on the way. Too strong, no good. And again, good defensive positioning by the Golden Knights to get the board. I'll tell you what, I'm really impressed with Clarence McBride Allen in terms of the rebounder. That's gonna be another travel before the shot and another turnover for the Golden Knights. Yeah. But I'm impressed with them so far, Pat. I saw they won, they won four straight. I know Smyrna's a little bit down this year. They beat, I think, a solid Sussex Tech squad and they lost to Cape, Dover beat Cape. I wanted to see them live. I'm impressed so far. So far, without a doubt. And again, a young team. Yeah. This is a young team. Let's keep that in mind as well. Right corner, three ball on the way. That's no good. This time, Dover gets the offensive board, and the shot was rejected. Oh, wow. And then a good steal positioning by Perkins. He lays it up too strong. Back and forth we go, Glenn. <laughs> good pass nice. underneath, and there's the slam. The feed was by Custis. The flush by McBride Allen. Nice work by McBride out. Good ball movement by the Knights. They get the three on one. Good extra pass by Custis. Leads to the dunk. Pass underneath. Looks like it was off of a Golden Knight leg and then coming away with it. Oh. Maker right behind the back. Cross court pass. Perkins almost with a steal. Three point shot on the way. Too strong. No good. Dover the rebound. Wow. What, what, <laughs> what work there by Maker to get in there. Look at this from Harrell. Offensive. Oh, that's, that's the second on him. That's going to be his second foul. Let's and see what, what Coach Wilson does here, Glenn. Both offensively. Just under six minutes to go here in the opening half. He trusts his guy. He's going to, he's going to keep him in. Yeah. Takes the freshman Meek out. Or I'm sorry, the junior Meek out. Yeah, Meek 6'5", 212, along with Istvan Norwood, who's 6'5", 215. Scramble for the ball underneath, and the battle is won by Dover. Senators will get the loose ball. Golden Knights, a again, both teams so far a little bit sloppy. The defense has done a really good job of taking away passing lanes and almost baiting passes. They, they makes it look like things are open, and then they jump in at the last second and turn the, the offense over. Double team inside. They'll swing it around, top of the circle. Three ball, that one's good by Denham Perkins. Tell you what, that's not that's good work by Perkins because he was not on balance. No. He was off balance and decided to take that shot, but delivered it with just enough touch to bury the triple. Five points for Perkins and then getting caught in no man's land in the paint, trying to get rid of the ball, but I think drawing a foul was Cannon. Nice work by Cannon. Another one of these great players for Sussex Central that are sophomores. 
What a what a contri contribution they're getting from Maker in the starting lineup, and then Dowdy and Cannon off the bench. You know that that's extremely impressive. Brandon Spencer, sophomore, he's starting. I mean, it's it's really an impressive group of 10th graders down there at Sussex Central contributing at the varsity level in the way that they are. The super sophomore class. Golden Knights get the ball in rather easily. Handling the rock up at the top of the key is Watson. Pass underneath. Perkins with the steal. Two on two ahead to Harrell. And a one-handed floater. He's leading score double digits with 10. Yeah, good work getting out in transition. And Jaheim looks to be in extreme shape this year. And he's out, he's springing out into the open floor. Oh, good head fake, oh, and then help. He got defensive help for the block. Harrell, the Euro step, and another one. He has 12 points, and Sussex Central wants a T.O. 23-18 Dover with a 6-0 run. Yeah, heck of a job. First, a great pump fake there by McBride Allen, but nice job of staying down on his feet by Kendall Abrams. He comes up with a big-time swat, and I just talked about Jaheim Harrell being in extreme shape this year. He is jutting out down floor, and they get it to him in transition. And he's a blur down the middle of the court this year. He goes skies for two, 12 quick points here in the first half for him. I say, Pat, not only can he light it up from outside, but he releases quicker than almost anybody that I have seen in uh, this year in high school basketball. He trusts his players so much when he sees they're in position to get the rebound, he's gone. He is. I mean, he, he's clearly the outlet guy. Teams are going to have to take note of that. Because I'll tell you what, he get the ball in his hand. He's so crafty with the basketball, too, in these one-on-one -on -one situations. Now he's picked up a couple offensive yeah. fouls. They're 50-50 calls, though. You're yeah. going to have to defend that extremely well in order to get that. Otherwise, it's a block, and more times than not, it's an and-one opportunity. But, uh, no, he, he is uh, he's definitely showed out. He's the leader of this team. He's that uh, lone holdover you know, star from yeah. that team last year. And he's, he's putting the team on his back and leading them the way that he needs to in order for them to be successful. 23-18, 4.43 to go here in the second half. Game high, 12 points from Jaheim Harrell. And leading Sussex Central off the bench is Dowdy with six. And he's hit both of his three-point shots. He's back in the game now, and he will throw it in. They may not have started this game, but he's going to get starters minutes. They're, yeah. they're, they're going to need his scoring. Good size out of the point guard there, Jameel Watson. And Dowdy breaks the pressure. Tough shot, wouldn't go. And coming away with a rebound is Abrams. Yeah, that's a good look down low for Custis. He's got to put that one in. I like the pump fake. Just got to get a good angle there and put it off the glass. Cross court pass to Harrell. And now he goes back cross court as they're trying to beat this zone. But Sussex Central's real quick and reacting. In the paint, they kick it back out. Perkins draws a double team. Nobody defensively on the ball, and it just rims out. Missing that shot was Tayshawn Allen. Tell you what, nice work there by Watson. Getting the rebound and pushing it out. And now they get a chance to set their half-court offense up. Yeah, they're going to set it up. Maker with the ball. Out beyond the circle. Here's Dowdy, right wing. Almost nailed his third one, and a little too strong. I like it, though. He comes off the, the screen, gets both feet planted, and it's a rhythm three, just and unable to hit. There's a college three by Harrell. Give him three for the game, and he has 15 points. Yeah, I mean, that, that's just, it's pretty form. It's flawless form. Good rotation on his shot, and he's got limitless range as well. He's just an all-around complete player within this state. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah, nice move. Good extension out of Watson to get the bucket. They and needed that, that. Yeah, that, that stopped an 8-0 run by Dover. Yeah, they needed that. Watson, nice work. And good patience, good touch. Perkins alone. And he makes it. Yeah. And Dover just doesn't have one guy that can put it up from outside. That's the no. second one for Perkins. They're doing a good job against this zone here of recent, swinging the ball around the perimeter and getting open shots. Dover up 29-20. to 20. That shot was too strong. Easy rebound for Tayshawn Allen. Yeah, a little too early in the shot clock. There's no one down low to offensive rebound. Just kind of threw that one up in no man's land. You want to make Dover work on defense if you can. You know, Maker was just making Harrell work. Good no-look pass underneath, but Allen couldn't handle it. 
And it will go over to the Golden Knights. Two and a half minutes to go here in the half, and Dover trying to pull away a little bit here, Pat. They already knocked down some outside shots. And the Knights have had a couple of turnovers, a couple of missed shots, and you know, right now they just gotta you just gotta try and hold on. This is a decent half for Sussex Central. Again, a team that's on the rise, not mm -hmm. quite there yet. Dover kind of the the sitting uh, prince of the Henlow, or sitting king of the Henlow Open Conference. So. Ooh, a lot of contact there, no call. Running the floor the other way, tried to kick out to Harrell, led him a little bit too far with a pass. In the game now is Nassim Cosme. From the floor, shot up no good, but drawing the contact. And going to the free throw line will be Maker. It's his third, that's gonna, if that's on Harrell, Harrell, it's his third. It is, that is a huge foul right there. Yeah, and, now, a, and a headsy play by David Maker to know who's on his back and to draw the foul. It is three on Harrell, so now he will probably sit out the final 2-12 of the half. And an opportunity with Dover's leading scorer on the bench for Sussex Central to slice into this lead. See if they can knock down the free throws. Ooh, that one was way off the mark. I talk a lot about technique on free throw shooting, and a lot of it's in your legs. And it just looked to me that time that Maker really didn't have use of his legs that much at the time. It was all upper body. Yes. See if he can correct that. Second one on the way. That's same off to the right. So he misses them both. We're counting down to two minutes to go in the first half. They missed opportunity there. Perhaps the wrist kind of floating off to the right a little bit. It will affect your shot. You might see Coach Wilson have Dover sit on the ball a little bit. Nope, little jump shot baseline, and that is good. The dime by... Perkins and the bucket by JV on Dennis. Yeah, the freshman Dennis, nice work, good touch right there, the short range jumper. That's tough from that corner spot. And that's now the largest lead oh, of the wow. game, 31 to 20. Another offensive foul on Maker on a push off. He's trying to create space and he's extending the arm. What he's gotta learn is to put the shoulder in mm -hmm. and then push, push a little bit off with your body weight, you're not gonna get that foul. It, you start extending an arm out. At the officials are trained to look for that. Only the second team foul, the half against Sussex Central, both committed by Maker. And the only person in foul trouble for Dover on the bench, their leading scorer, Jaheim Harrell. Move in the paint, no good. Looked like all hand on that ball, but we're going to get a foul by Let's number 13, McBride on. Allen, I think. I think it may go on Custis. Let's see. Uh, Coach Hopkins wanted to jump ball. He thought that was hand on ball. Well, if, I mean, because because uh, McBride Allen did a good job of standing his ground and staying straight up. Looks like they called They're gonna the call it on him. They're gonna call it on him. I yeah. thought maybe for a second they were calling for on Custis, who was also in the area. Right. They so call it on the floor too, Glenn. Yep. Only That's the third team foul. They're lucky. Cosme with a ball. Now a little one-handed floater, that's no good. Good position to get the offensive rebound on the putback bucket by Estevan Norwood. Nice work by Norwood. Good power dribble, way to put it up high off the glass with some touch. And with Harrell on the bench, Dover has extended the lead from eight out to 13. In the paint, turn around, floater up, and that is good by McBride Allen. I like this young man's game, McBride Allen. He's got a good touch around the rim. Obviously, he's had a couple of jams. He's got some length that really helps him defensively, and he's relentless on the on the boards. Just under 40 seconds to go in the half, and I think Coach Wilson has called for his team to sit on the ball for the last shot. Smart. I mean, you're up yeah. 11. Yeah. Oh, almost had a turnover. The Gold Knights have shown to be kind of undisciplined defensively in terms of They'll run and jump, which will set up open shots for you. Mm -hmm. Oh, turn around, jump shot, and he banks it. The bank is open here at Dover High. It's a good look right there. I mean, it's it's open. <laughs> That's Norwood. Four points for him in this quarter off the bench. A lot of contact there. We're going to get a blocking foul on Cosme, I think. That'll be the sixth team foul against Dover. So the next will put him in the bonus, but we only have five seconds to go in the half. Good drive by Cannon. I like the effort right there. 
No, I think the foul was on the floor. That looks like what they're calling here, Glenn. Yep. Sussex Central trying to get the last shot. They got it in the hands of the long-range shooter, Dowdy. And he dribbles to the free throw line, puts up a floater, and it will not go down. Pat, what do you think about this first half? It was tight at the end of one. Actually, it was tied that Dover really took over in the second quarter. Yeah, Dover did a good job. You know, they, they slowed. They, they kind of got a little out of control there for a little bit. Sussex Central knocked down some outside shots as soon as Dowdy came in the game. But Dover did a good job of collecting themselves, getting out in transition, getting some some easy lays in transition off of turnovers from their defense. And then some outside shots hit by Harrell and Perkins really kind of helped them extend their lead a little bit. It'll be interesting to see what they do now with Jaheim Harrell with three fouls. Does he sit to start the second half? Right. Or do they put him back out on the floor? If they don't put him out on the floor, Central's got a golden opportunity to crawl back into that game. Yeah, it will be a key decision. We'll have to wait and see if the teams come out of the locker room and we start the third quarter. All right. We're going to step aside. We'll be back just before we start the third quarter and let you know what everybody did uh, scoring-wise. We'll do that right after these messages on Delaware Live, powered by 302 Sports. The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard. Our neighbors, our schools, the places we go, and the people we know. And now there's one news outlet where our story is told. Delaware Live, locally owned community-based news free to every reader because Delaware's future belongs to all of us. Quality journalism we can trust to help us take on the day. Delaware Live, our state, our news, our home. Get the assurance that your HVAC system is what you need with Ambience. Ambience provides you with over 25 years of experience in the heating, cooling, and plumbing industry. The team at Ambience Heating and Air Conditioning provides high-quality residential HVAC installations, maintenance, and repairs in new and older homes in the Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Tri-State area. You may not realize it, but half of your energy costs go to heating and cooling. Make sure your energy dollars count and call us today for a free estimate. 302-239-HVAC. 302 302- 2239-4822. Hi, I'm Scott Cameron from Solo Concepts. Today we're at Fish On in the Villages of Five Points. Come check us out. Fish On is committed to serving beautiful, simple coastal cuisine in a cool atmosphere with a happening bar, spacious dining room, and outside patio. Popular dishes include the seafood stew and fresh oysters from the raw bar. Fish On's recently renovated event room and is the perfect spot for your next event. Fish On and Lewis in the Villages of Five Points open seven days a week. Best happy hour around. See you soon. Melissa Ellis is part of Four Acre Realty Company. She is licensed in both Delaware and Pennsylvania. Melissa knows that being personable and patient is a key to her success as a realtor. Helping both buyers and sellers understand current market values and conditions puts them in the best position when making an offer or pricing a home for sale. That kind of high-level professional communication and her skill at being a team player put Melissa's clients at ease, knowing she has their best interests at heart. Melissa is also an athlete herself, playing multiple sports so she understands what teamwork means. She is still involved in sports, whether it's sponsoring, coaching, or being team mom for her own two daughters' teams. What sets her apart is how grateful Melissa is for the trust of her clients. She never takes that trust for granted. She affords all people respect and honesty and works hard to be the support system clients need and deserve. Melissa Ellis, strong connections, strong service. Welcome to Premier Physical Therapy and Sports Performance. We're a locally owned outpatient physical therapy practice with convenient locations in all three counties in Delaware. At Premier, we have experienced physical therapists with advanced credentials, but their hospitality, passion, and enthusiasm is what makes the difference for you. Find our convenient locations at PremierPTSP.com. You may have tried physical therapy, but have you tried Premier? Hi, I'm Scott Cameron from Solo Concepts. Today we're at Lupo Italian Kitchen in downtown Rehoboth Beach. Come check us out. Located inside the Hotel Rehoboth, Lupo serves coastal Italian cuisine with fresh pasta made in-house daily. Lupo features plenty of unique craft cocktails and an extensive award-winning all-Italian wine list. Popular dishes include lobster bucatini, veal meatballs, grilled swordfish, and eggplant parmesan. Lupo Italian Kitchen on Rehoboth Avenue, serving happy hour daily and dinner seven days a week. See you soon.
How you doing? My name is Mike Cassidy. I'm the founder and president of Cassidy Painting. I started back in 1984, incorporated in 1986. I never had the word no in my vocabulary. Uh, when someone called me to do a job, I always said yes. Whether it was a struggle, whether it was seven days a week, uh, sun up to sundown, it, it didn't matter. And with that philosophy, we were able to grow to the size we are. We employ close to 80 uh, individuals. We really enjoy being in the family business. Um, I look forward to coming to work every day. And it's so nice to work with the people that we work with in the office. Uh, we really become a family with them. We really create a family experience around here. And Cassidy Painting is a very diversified company. We don't say no to anything. We deal with everything from epoxy floors to painting buildings to uh, spray foam insulation, spray fireproofing. If it deals with a coating, we can handle it. So when our customers call and they're under the gun and they know the need to get a job done, they know who to call because we perform. We've always been performed. We've never been replaced out of 37 years of business. For any of your painting needs, we can handle it. High school athletics is not what it used to be. The sporting goods industry has been disrupted adding to coach and athletic director daily challenges. BSN Sports stands ready to change the fundamentals of our industry, giving our customers the advantages they need right now. Your dedicated local sales pro is supported with nationwide team service, including sport and category experts. Get the look of D1 colleges and pro teams with our program that streamlines ordering your staff apparel, player gear, and fan wear. Stretch your budget with our fundraising solution, free and ready in minutes. Our campus branding products are perfect for boosting school and team pride. BSN Sports has the advantages you need right now. First State Orthopedic Statewide has 29 physicians at 16 locations. Our physicians and staff provide both non-surgical as well as surgical treatment for almost all orthopedic conditions and injuries. We are specially trained in the current state-of-the-art techniques. We serve as team physician and orthopedic consultant for over 20 high schools, Wilmington University, and many local recreational and competitive leagues. Our doctors are readily available to the local emergency departments as well as medical aid units and urgent care centers for consultation and treatment. Call for an appointment today or visit us at firststateortho.com. Welcome back here to Dover High School. Happy New Year, everybody. Here on the 3rd of January, our first boys basketball action of the new year. I'm Glenn Fraser alongside Pat Gariantes. And let's take a look at the scoring in the first half. Leading the way for Sussex Central, Dowdy with six and McBride Allen with six. Four points from Watson, two each from Maker and Custis. Leading the way for Dover with 15, but he has three personal fouls. Jaheim Harrell, eight points from Denham Perkins. Two points each from Meek, Tayshawn Allen, Dennis, Abrams, and four points for Norwood off the bench. And Pat, one thing I forgot to mention when we opened up the broadcast, 
McBride Allen, you said uh, he's impressing you. He's averaging 10 points and six rebounds a game, and I think he's just about on his average here in the first half. Yeah, he's been he's been extremely good and very active on the re on the glass. That's what I really like is his energy level uh, on both sides of the floor. He's relentless going after rebounds, and he's he's done his share for the Golden Knights. Jaheim Harrell has just been on another level right now. He's playing the game at a much higher speed than everyone else. He's the difference in this one, Glenn. You take him or you manage him. Yeah. Uh, you know, to um, you know, under double figures in this game is is much closer right now than a 13 point game. All right, so they were tied at the end of the first quarter. Then Dover went on an 8-0 run to grab a sizable lead. Then when Harrell collected his third personal foul, he went to the bench. Dover added to that lead and got it into double digits. What do you think Sussex Central needs to do to get back in the ball game here? Well, you know, they, they have to be a little bit smarter with the basketball. A lot of turnovers towards the end of that first half uh, and allowing Dover to get out and, and push the ball in transition. So a little bit smarter with the basketball. And I think they need it a little bit better in terms of shot selection. You know, there's a lot of quick shots yeah. where their guys are out of position and not able to fight for offensive rebounds, work the ball around on offense, get some, uh, some better looks down low. And, and out on the perimeter, make this Dover defense work a little bit. And I think they can get themselves back into this game. All right, on the floor for Sussex Central to start the third quarter, Dowdy, Maker, Watson, also number 24, Custis, and number 13, McBride Allen. For Dover, right in front of us is the leading scorer in the game. He'll throw it in to start the half. Jaheim Harrell gets the ball to Perkins. Also on the floor for Dover, Tayshawn Allen along with number 11, Kendall Abrams. And finally, the fifth starter is Jaden Meek. Ultimate trust here from Coach Wilson, putting his star player out there to start the second half off with three fouls. He trusts that Jaheim will not you know, be uh, careless and pick up his fourth. Now on the flip side, if I'm, if I'm Sussex Central, I'm looking to attack Jaheim Harrell on the defensive side of the ball, and I'm looking to take charges every single time he drives the lane. Good hands defensively for the Golden Knights. They create a turnover, but then they throw it away. Trying to find Dowdy down in the left corner. And he's open there in the corner, but again, this is kind of playing a little too fast for yourself. It's a one-handed try and, and lateral pass across the court instead of making a two-handed chest pass. Yeah. Little things like that, Glenn, are the difference in it. Be crisp with your passes. Be smart with your passes. Be smart with your shot selection, and you can get back into this game. Perkins just inside the free throw line. That shot was rejected, but Perkins runs down the loose ball. I like this trap. Another defensive look from the Knights. Good nice pass work. underneath to Meek. He couldn't get it to go down, but there was contact. He'll go to the free throw line. Good pass from Tayshawn Allen. Yeah, great pass by Tayshawn Allen. He did a good job of getting, again, against the zone defense. What you want to do is get into the middle of the court. His responsibility is to get on that nail of the foul line, and he was right there. He caught it. He turned and looked opposite. He knew his teammate was on the opposite block, and there was good positioning underneath by Meek. He did a good job with his body to shield off his defender and give a passing lane, and he delivered it right to him, and he earns himself two free throws. And he, he makes the first. The foul was on Custis. That's his first. Team's first. As the Golden Knights only committed three personal fouls the entire first half. Second free throw missed. So the lead is 14. Again, I got to get some help here. Get somebody in the middle of the court. Good hands. Good hands down low by Perkins coming up with the steal. You see Harrell on the break. He pulled up a little bit that time. Didn't want to get himself involved in one of those 50-50 calls. Nice work again against that zone. That Good. time it was Cosme yep. Glenn on the, on the dish finding Meek. So Meek has three quick points. Dover's up by 16. Now you got to watch. You got to watch. It's a Good hands by Cosme from behind. Denham Perkins goes in amongst the trees. Can't get it to go. Gets his own rebound and gets it again. Harrell, baseline jump shot, fade away. Good. 17 for him. And we've got a timeout by Coach Sean Hopkins of Sussex Central. Not the start they wanted to the second half. No, not the start. Careless turnovers. You know, right there again, that's this kind of floor awareness. They did the right job. They got the ball in the middle of the court to Jameel Watson, but he kind of like 75% speeds dribbling down the court. You got to know there's three defenders right behind you 
looking to trail. So yeah. you get the ball in the middle of the court, you're either looking to attack, you're looking to pass it opposite right away, or you don't dribble at all, and you turn and you look opposite. Let that defense sink back behind you. I mean, it's little things like that. If you're, if you're a half a second too slow with your decision making, a team like Dover will take advantage of you. And speaking of, of smarts basketball, yeah. Jaheim Harrell, great job pulling up, not yeah. getting a charge there. And on that drive, pulled up with the fadeaway because he's got that in his game. Yeah. And, and I mean, that's that's money. That's money. That's a, that's a big time player with a high IQ making a play. That 6 2 frame, he certainly has the length. That was a great athletic fadeaway jump shot by Harrell. 18 point Dover lead now. It was tied at the end of the first quarter. There you go. Turn, look opposite. Now they collapsed on him, though, yeah. Great job. You broke the pressure there, though. Oh, he stepped out of bounds. They called a foul. Oh, they fouled. They're going to foul. Looks like it's going to be on Perkins. Yep. Good work there by the Golden Knights. Now, just because you're getting pressured there in the half court doesn't mean you need to panic. Use your pivot foot. Use the, you know, move the ball around. Look opposite. It's the same principles apply in the half court they do in the press. It's good hands again by Perkins. Dover is really bothering the Golden Knights with their pressure D. And, and the Golden Knights aren't exact. They're not. They're just kind of throwing the ball around as if there's not pressure out there. And you got to be a little extra cautious when the pressure's out there. Yeah, nice that's look. good ball movement that time. Yep, couple of passes and they found Watson open. Glenn, you're right. That's a, that is textbook what they what they should be. The ball moved crisp and it moved with confidence and look what happened. That stops a big Dover run. Still a 16 point Senator advantage. Five and a half to go here in this third quarter. Harrell thought about top of the circle. Now he goes down in the left corner. That shot is short, but he follows it. Kicks it out. A little too strong for Cosme. Well, exactly. A good idea just wasn't executed well. That should have been a kick. It's not. It'll stay here, though. Yeah, it's going to stay. Maker tried to go behind the back, and it, the pass, the ball, when it ran around the back, went right off a of Dover Senator. And we've got a Dover sub. Cosme had the right idea on that pass. Sorry, Glenn. That's okay. Just Allen a goes out. A little too much mustard on it. Oh, good pass again to Watson, and he uses his length. High off the glass, four straight points for him. Yeah, I like Watson. He elevates there, and now Coach Wilson, he's four in a row. He wants to talk to his team. But Watson finding the, the lane, sinking into the spot and rising up strong with two hands, and then at the top of his jump, he's laying the soft off the glass. That's what you want to see right there. And I tell you what, Watson's an impressive athlete himself. Yeah. He may only be about 6'2", but he can get up above, almost above the rim. Yeah, he has great arm length. And yeah. he now has eight points to lead the Golden Knights. He's done good. You can see here Coach Hopkins coaching his team. And it never stops when you've got a young team, Glenn. Yeah. You've got to constantly be telling these guys. You know, it's, it really comes down to repetition. So the more often these guys are in certain situations, the easier it is to think about what you have to do, the quicker those decisions become. And until they get there, you've got to continuously – repeat yeah. uh, messages and, and help them out. Five minutes to go in the third quarter. Dover up by 14 over the Golden Knights, a scrappy team from Sussex Central. That the Senators, a little bit too much scoring for them right now. They lose the handle on the baseline and Dowdy will bring it across midcourt. Dowdy will take the long range three point shot, it's short. Cosme runs down the loose ball. You see, he, he, he thought that one was going in, and Cosme was left wide open there to get the rebound. Nearly a turnover, though. Cosme tried to find a teammate alone. Now he dishes it off after the penetration, but Meek was way off on that shot. Oh, they got a guy up, but the ball doesn't get to him. Look at this drive. Nice uh, block. That's number 11 on number 11. That's a great block by Abrams on Cannon. And Cannon, you know, if he if he's able to look up there early on, he's got a streaking David Maker yeah. ahead of the defense there, but he couldn't locate him. Almost got there and, and finished it off himself, but like you said, nice block by Abrams. Maker will throw it in. Gets it down on the baseline. That's Dowdy. Nice he kicks look. the pass. 
And he can't quite get the shot to go down. That was Custis. Yeah, good look. I mean, that's exactly where the ball should go, and Custis had the layup, just couldn't finish it. Four minutes to go in this third quarter. We played half of the third. Dover took a 13-point halftime lead and stretched it out to 18. Right now it is 16, or excuse me, 14. And there's a turnover by the Senators. Good defense there by the Knights, and it forced that pass to have to be spot on. It wasn't and led Harrell a little too much, and it's a turnover. Head coach Sean Hopkins clapping his approval for his defensive effort right at the Golden Knights on that possession. Almost moving without the ball. That was pretty close to a travel there. Step back, three-point shot maker. That's short. He fouls his own miss. Kicks it out to Dowdy. Hesitation, and then puts a one-handed runner up. That wouldn't go. Tough shot. Yep. And there's a kick. The field goal attempt is up. Oh, no, football season's over in high school. <laughs> That's good, Glenn. <laughs> Coach Wells, if you're looking for a kicker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 3.20 to go in this third quarter. Dover with the ball and a 14-point lead. I'm Glenn Fraser. He's Pat Gariantes. Nick Halliday on camera for us. Great facility here at Dover High. Yes, it is. Yes, it is, Glenn. Good defense again here by the Golden yeah. Knights. They got to keep going though. Nice work. Good strong move, but I think they're going to call a whistle and a push. That's only the third foul committed in the second half, and we have played five minutes. I like that drive by Norwood. He used his body to get in the lane now. He may have got away with a hook, <laughs> but they let the whistles were his friend there. Good inbounds pass. Shot wouldn't go. Running down the loose ball, puts the left-hander up, no good. And finally, Custis runs it down, but when he grabbed it, he was out of bounds. Yeah, Dover kind of getting out of control again these last couple of minutes where, you know, they're close to the rim, but they're just throwing the ball up instead of shooting the ball. They're just throwing the ball up at the rim. Take your time. Put that ball nice and soft off the glass. Pretend like there's no defender there. Abrams checks out. Coming in for him nice is work. Davion Dennis. Good, good pass ball. underneath. And he hesitated, got the defender up with the fake. Good bucket. That's a really nice bucket right there. That was Jackson Dixon. Great work by Dixon, good pump fake. Look at this. Oh, nice. good laying on the other end of the floor. That's number 13, McBride Allen. And a good pass by Watson. He looked like he was gonna go all the way and then at the last minute dropped it off once the defender committed to him. Good two on one work right there on that drive. Perkins guarded closely, gets a screen, and then a little bit of contact and a whistle is going to be a block on McBride Allen. Yeah, they're going to get him every single time for that. He's a step slow on the hedge. You can see Coach Hopkins is like, you got to step up earlier than that on those dribble handoffs, and he does. He's a step too slow, and it ends up being a, a, a block, a reach-in foul because his body is not in front of him. Second personal foul on Clarence McBride Allen. The junior center for the Golden Knights. 2.10 to go in the third. Perkins all the way down, lays it off, but we've got a travel on his way to the bucket. Yeah, well, a little power dribble is all that was needed by Norwood. He kind of left it down there, got his feet a little too quick. Dover again with backcourt pressure. Golden Knights break it. Dribble right into the free throw line. One-handed floaters up, and that is good by Cannon, the sophomore. Like that from Cannon. Nice work to get in the middle of the floor. Floated that right over the front of the rim. His first points of the night, and now it's a 12-point Dover lead. And he's got the reach there. Reach in, foul committed by the Golden Knights. That'll be team foul number four. And they got to be careful here because four fouls here already. Still got a whole quarter left to go. First on Cannon. Nobody in foul trouble for Sussex Central. They have three players with two personal fouls. Morrell has played the entire third quarter with that third personal. He's and he, yeah. he's, he has the ball. Kick out to him. Three-point shot on the way. Too strong. Boy, Perkins is so athletic. Dowdy. Oh, a little out of control. Wow. He goes end to end, but he draws the foul. And I think that's going to go on Jackson Dixon, the freshman. It is. He's a little too, little too late there. Now, one thing is there, I think 
Dowdy kind of got a little bit lost on that drive. Yeah, Watson in the corner. I'd like to see him give that up a little bit earlier or get himself a better angle to the rim. He kind of drove in there and kind of got stuck in no man's land. Lucky for him, there was a blocking foul. They actually called the foul on Javion Dennis. And almost a steal. Floater. That was about a 15-footer. No good. Loose ball. Dover has it on the floor. Nice Full pass. court pass. Guess who? Harrell with a lay-in. And... I think he wanted a foul after the shot, didn't get it. 19 for him. And there's a whistle and a foul on the other end of the floor. I'll tell you what, that was a heck of an outlet pass right there. Couldn't quite see who made it. I think it was Jackson Dixon on that outlet pass to Harrell, but that was perfectly placed and he knew what to do with it. And then there's a foul here, quick whistle on the other end. I think that's on Denham Perkins. It is. That's yeah, his second. And I'm a little bit surprised that that wasn't a shooting foul because Cannon looked to be going up for a layup on uh -huh. that. But it'll, it, officials say it's on the floor. Third team foul committed by Dover. Golden Knights have committed four team fouls. There's the pass in. And we've got contact and a whistle. Going to get that on. I believe that's Jackson Dixon. And it's going to. That was Custis with the ball who drew the contact. It's going to even the foul yep. situation up. That's the first on Jackson Dixon. Pass down in the corner. Golden Knights now a little bit more active against the zone. Turnaround baseline, tough shot. It was rejected, and he got a traveling call. Great defense by Tayshawn Allen. You think it should have been a jump ball and a tie-up? I think it should have been a jump ball because of how great the defense was. I mean, for Dover, they're going to love it because they get yeah. the ball oh, back yeah. guaranteed. But that yeah. looked like it was a clean block jump ball. But nice work there by that defense at Dover. Dover, once again, could hold for the final shot of the quarter if they won. We're down to 40 seconds and a 14-point Dover lead. Bounce pass from Harrell down underneath. Nice cross-court pass, but me couldn't get that to go. And yeah, me got to be a little bit stronger putting that ball up. Nice ball movement down on the block by the Senators. Yeah, sure was. Unselfish play. Yes, it was. Look at this hustle, Glenn. And we're going to have a foul call, I believe. Denham Perkins had the ball, was getting ready to dish it off. I'm going to call this one on Dowdy, I think, on the loose ball. Order. Yeah. Now, I think they said he was out of bounds when okay. he touched it. All right. Yeah, nothing posted on the board. So we're under 17 seconds to go in the quarter. Dover had an 18-point lead. It's 14 right now. Pass to Meeks. Has that shot partially deflected? Four, three, two. Maker from midcourt. Is he going to get it off? He does. No good. So Dover took a 13-point advantage at half. They added one point to that lead. We'll be back with the fourth quarter action. Dover up by 14 here on Delaware Live, powered by 302 Sports. Wraps, signs, banners, and promotional items that can help your business stand out from the rest. Looking for an excellent way to convey a professional image? Customized promotional products are the perfect way to target new customers, increase employee retention, and boost your brand awareness. Let the professionals at Cassidy Graphics bring your advertising ideas to life. Give them a call today at 302-326-2412. Again, that number is 302-326-2412. Again, Casty Graphics brings your advertising ideas to life. Welcome back here to Dover High. Our first game of the new year, uh, 2023, here at Dover High School, the Dover Senators against the Sussex Central Golden Knights. A really competitive game. Well played first quarter, ended in a 13 all tie, but since then really Dover has gotten the best of the Golden Knights, Pat. They have. I mean, Jaheim Harrell had a huge second quarter, and then the third quarter their defense really kind of put the clamps down on Sussex Central, and they were able to get out in transition as well. Uh, I've, been, I've been impressed with this Dover group. Jaheim Harrell, only four points in that third quarter. His teammates had to step up. You saw Denham Perkins come up with a couple nice plays. You yep. saw um, Jaden Meek down low. Uh, these guys, and they stepped up on the defensive end of the floor. It's a, it's, it's, it's an impressive outing here for Dover. And the Knights, they just they seem to be just a half step too yeah. slow right now. Yeah. Whether it be decision making, whether it be you know drives to the basket, whether it be on the defense, whether it be against the trap, 
or whether it be again in their shot selection, a little yeah. bit short on some of their shots. But they're right there. They are. They need a little bit of a run to start this fourth quarter to get back into it. There's a whistle and a call. I believe they're going to get Cosme. And it will be Nassim Cosme. That is his second and the team's fifth. One more foul to give for Dover until we're in the one-on-one. -on -one. Right. And that's one thing out of this young Sussex Central team. They have only committed seven personal fouls the entire game. Yeah. Custis underneath, he lost it. Running the floor on the far side is Cosby, and he'll pull up and wait for his teammates. Perkins dribbles all the way down to the paint, throws up a shot, no good, and it will belong to Dover. Okay, well, Perkins did a great job. The Knights had four defenders back in the paint, and he still found a way to get to the lane and get a layup off. He's quick. He is, man. Probably the fastest player on the floor. 30 seconds into this final quarter, Dover with the advantage, 44 to 30. And the basketball. Perkins guarded by the much taller Custis. Loses him in the lane. Hesitates, puts up the runner off the glass, and he missed the rim. Maker end to end. He puts up the floater. That's short. Got his own rebound, though. It was blocked. Three-point shot on the way. Good. That's a make by Cannon, the sophomore. They needed that, Glenn. They had an outside three-point shot. They haven't had one of those in a while. Yeah, it's only their third of the game. They had some traps. They forced a turnover. Good work on the trap. Yeah. Now the Golden Knights have an opportunity here to get this lead back to single digits. And it looks like Coach Wilson at Dover wants a T.O. Yeah, it's just a smart time out here by Coach Wilson. You know, I think what he wants, and, you know, Jaheim Harrell has got to come get the basketball, man. Okay. Uh, you know, now you got through the third quarter. You didn't pick up a foul. Now you can start to take at least a little bit of your aggressiveness back. You don't want to yeah. get that fourth too, too soon, but you also don't want to continue to play timid here. So, you know, I think he's going to implore his guys, take care of the basketball. Let's get the ball into our ball handler's hands, and let's take smart shots. We're up 11. Yeah. Where at the time you're up 14. Like there's no need to get into this run and gun. You know, let's limit possessions. Let's, um, you know, kind of slow the game down, so to speak, in the sense of, hey, we're going to run our offense when layups are there. We're, yeah, we're going to take them. If open shots are there, we're going to take them. Mm -hmm. But let's not get in over our heads, right? I mean, there's no shot clock here. Yeah. You can you can take 30 seconds off, 40 seconds off a of possession, and still get a good look. Once again, our officiating crew for tonight's ball game, Maurice Parker, Dante Bailey, and John Forrest. The guys have done a pretty good job here tonight. And the reason I say that is you haven't heard us question too many calls. When there's no controversy and you're not talking about the officials, they're doing their job. Yeah, they are. This is a good group. I, I, believe, um, I believe these gentlemen did a, a game down at Slam Dunk to the Beach, too, over the holiday break, and they did a good job there, too. So I've been impressed. They've... Uh, they have not dictated the outcome of this game. Right. All right, Golden Knights with a chance to get the deficit down into single digits. Long three-point shot, misses, Dover with a rebound. A little bit of a heat check right there, huh? <laughs> yeah. Shot was taken by the sophomore, Cannon Harrell, pulled down the rebound. And here you go, this and is smart. Yes. Run your offensive set here, there's no, you're in no particular hurry. Try to find somebody cutting to the basket. And they've been unselfish on the baseline. When the bigs have gotten the ball down low, if they draw a double team, they're doing a good job passing it off. Good work here by Cosme. There's no need to get anything crazy. Now this is where I like to see Jaheim Harrell come get the ball. Cosme going a little glow trotter on us here, dribbling between his legs. He should be able to handle the rock. Quarterback on the football team. Decision maker, exactly. Yes. Nice oh, pass. good move. Good dish underneath. Drawing the contact and going to the free throw line will be Kendall Abrams. But making that play was Perkins. Love what Perkins did there. Utilizing his ball fakes, keeping his feet on the ground, and then attacking the lane and doing a great job finding his bigs who are in great position. And, you know, as a point guard, your number one goal is to get into the painted area because that collapses the defense. They're either going to have to come defend you, otherwise you're taking a layup, or when they do come to defend you, you're looking to drop off. Uh, none of that happens unless there's somebody in the painted area. And Denham Perkins with his quickness 
is able to almost get there at will. Draws the defense onto him, and somebody's open underneath. Third personal foul now called on number 13, McBride Allen, and both teams have committed five team fouls. He makes one out of two. Abrams does. Give him three points for the ball game. Not quite sure what happened here. No, I don't either. But Dover ends up with the ball. Dover with a 12-point lead. That's, I'm sorry. They did not. It was Sussex Central throwing it in. Good attempt at a steal there by Abrams. You can't make that as a chest pass. That's got to be an over-the-back pass. That's got to be a, a forward pass. That, that floated in the air too long. It allowed a defender to step back there. It's not a bad look because it's open. You got to throw that thing a lot more crisp. Abrams with that 6-6 frame almost caught that ball and created a turnover. However, when he came down, he stepped out of bounds. All right, once again, an opportunity for the Golden Knights to cut it to 10 or single digits. Pass was deflected, baseline. Good ball movement there around the perimeter. Watson, oh boy, Hopkins wanted a call there and he didn't get it. It looks like they did. Looks like they called something here late, Glenn. Let's see what this, if this is on the shot or not. Let's see. Yeah. Looked like Watson had his hand pulled back. Yeah. In the, and if that's the case, that's either a foul or a jump ball. Because if he's got all ball, then that's a held ball. It's causing it's causing issues. That's the third personal foul on Denham Perkins. So now he and Harrell both have three. Sixteen foul on Dover. Central will be in the bonus the rest of the game. And Watson makes the first free throw. Give him nine points for the game, and he could be the first Golden Knight in double digits if he makes the free throw. He has five points in this quarter. That one's good. He's been good here in the second half, Glenn. Like you said, six points in this half to give him ten. Yep. And here comes some pressure. Yeah. Dover's just got to be careful with the basketball. Again, I like to see number 32 come pick this ball up. And no problem getting freshman. it over the timeline by Jackson Dixon, the freshman. And then a collapse, double team on the ball on Abrams. They foul him. Last foul to give there. It's going to go on Custis. Yep. So now Central got to be careful. I think mean, both teams have to be careful here off the, you know, unless it, when the ball's on the court, you don't want to send the other team to the line this late in the game. Yep. Either way, I mean, the Knights are trying to make a comeback. You don't want to be doing that. And if you're Dover, you don't want to be putting Sussex Central on the line with no time coming off the clock. Both teams have two players with three personal fouls. Perkins and Horrell for Dover. And for Sussex Central, McBride, Allen, and Custis. Dover moving the ball around the perimeter. Now driving in, putting up a runner, and it's good. Denham Perkins. Nice work. Nice His work by Perkins. First points of the half, he now has 10. Nice work right there. Maker to the free throw line. He'll put one up, and a floater goes in. And now we have a timeout. I think one of the centers lost their sneaker, and they allowed Abrams to get it back on. Nice work there by, by Maker getting into the lane, floating that up and in. I think he needed that. Only four points on the night. That was his second bucket. Yeah, the other one was way back in the opening quarter. Mm -hmm. 4.45 to go in the ball game. That's a 10-point Dover lead. Perkins guarded by Maker, now dishes off to Abrams. Down underneath and knocked away. Good steal, good hands by Cannon. Ahead to Watson. He finds somebody up in the corner. It's Maker and he got the three. How about that? Five straight points for him and we're down to single digits. Working the ball quick over to the corner. Nice work. Find a guy and look, sees the layup go in, comes Zach, hits a three. Yeah. Good work by Perkins here. Baseline move, a lot of contact. The shot goes, and it's going to count. Nice Just work. when Sussex Central got it down to seven, Dover comes right back with a big play. Love it. And again, Perkins able to get into the lane. Little drop off for Kendall Abrams. He did a good job of taking the contact, putting that up and in. And that's the fourth foul on Custis. First player to achieve that goal in the ball game. Now both teams in the bonus for the rest of the game. Abrams trying to complete the three-point play, and it rims out on him. So it's still a single-digit lead for Dover. Central ball with 4.15 to go. 
How about this Central team? They're just never saying die, Glenn. And they've taken Harrell out of the game in the second half. They really have. He scored four points in the third quarter. He has 19 game high. Well, got lost in the air, yes, but did. still the Golden Knights come back with a loose ball, and then they lose it, but a whistle and a foul. Be one and one. And that will send who's on the deck? Cannon. Cannon will go to the line. The sophomore. <laughs> we, we could say that just about the whole team for Sussex Central. The sophomore. Yeah, seriously. It's an impressive group. Foul goes against Norwood, his second. Team seven. Both teams in the bonus. And now at the line. And these are all important. Yes, they are, Glenn. For both teams. Late in the game, making your free throws. We played half of this final quarter. And it's first free throws on the way, and it's off the front of the rim, no good. Violation on Dover, Glenn. Yep, lane violation, so he'll go back to the line. Shoot the front end again. Dover with a sub now, Meek into the game. Abrams will check out. Dowdy playing uh, the defender. Way off the ball beyond midcourt. He doesn't want, Sussex Central wasn't, don't, don't want to see Harrell get loose again off of a miss and a rebound. Again, misses the front end, so he won't get the bonus. Cross. Look at this. There he is. We just talked about him. Give him 21, and it's back to a double-digit lead. Can't lose sight of him, and again, Jaheim able to get out in transition. It's got to be his sixth layup in transition tonight. Over the top with the rebound, and the shot won't go. Good rebound by McBride Allen. Then Perkins will take the jump shot. Block. Short. Didn't need that shot. Again, up 11. Don't need that shot in transition. Pull the ball out and run some clock late in the game here. Watson goes in to end, draws contact, no call, and the ball out of bounds off of the Golden Knights. Still 3.21 to play. Golden Knights... Got that lead all the way down to seven from 18. And now we got a little pushing and shoving by the two number ones, Maker and Perkins. I think the official's going to talk to him about it. Talk, yeah, talking about getting it. the game under control. Two competitors. Yep. Oh, good. good step in to get the pass, but then he lost it. It was off of the Golden Knights. Sussex Central trying ah, to right. continue a five-game winning streak. He's going to go to Sussex Central. Oh, okay. How about that? Yeah, a little turn of events. Turnover. They get it into Watson. Passes down underneath. They lost the handle, and it goes to Dover. Trying to make a move with the youngster, McBride Allen. And now Dover will pull out and work a little clock. And you can see Coach Wilson calm down a little bit. They'll call the hand, hand check here, Glenn. One and one upcoming. That's on Dowdy. That'll be his first foul. Team's eighth. Sends to the line, Perkins. Not the worst foul in the world, all things considered. Yep. Hope for some misses, try and get a fresh possession. First free throw attempt of the game from Denham Perkins. He makes it. Nice form from Denham. Obviously, he's knocked down a couple of threes in this game. Yep. So he does have the shooting ability and a lot of times you can see that right on the free throw line. How, how good of a touch does the player have? Right. Soft hands. Makes them both. Good follow through. Everything about that is pretty. Dover's lead back to 13. That's where it was at the half. Oh, cross court pass stolen by Perkins. He'll go coast to coast and lay it in. And now it's back to 15. And Coach Hopkins wants a timeout with 2.52 to go in the game. Moments ago, it was a seven-point ball game, and then Dover responded. It's back out to 15. Great job by Dover. Again, defensively there on the pressure. And, um, you know, Sussex Central has kind of been loose with the basketball in these, these, uh, this full-court trapping defense. Yeah. You know, Dover's not doing anything crazy. It's just that they're sitting back waiting and waiting and waiting for you to make a mistake. And a lot of times it's just not, Sussex Central just not in good positioning. You had three guys along a single line and you tried to throw the ball all the way across court and it was just begging to be stolen. That stuff they'll work on as the year goes on against a, a headsy team like Dover when you're trying to force an upset, can't make those mistakes. 
Leading scorer for Dover is Harrell with 21. 14 points from Dennis Perkins. He has six here in the fourth quarter. And as we mentioned, that lead was down to seven at 47 to 40. And right now Dover is on an 8-0 run. Great work by Dover here down the stretch. They didn't panic. This game could have went the complete opposite direction. They stayed within themselves and they built the lead back up to 15. You can almost take a collective sigh of relief right now up 15 with 2.52 to go. You still got to execute, don't get me wrong. But it's a lot better in this game being a seven or six point game with three minutes left. These two, of course, will meet again later in the year at Sussex Central. And that should be a good one. It should. Yeah, a young team like this, if they can continue to, de to develop. All right, the Golden Knights trying to break the half-court press. Cross-court pass, telegraphed and stolen far. by Dover. Yep, it's too far. I now mean, see if they just pull it out. Yep. Smart. Smart decision right there. Norwood on the steal. 2.30 to go in the game. Dover with the ball and a 15-point advantage. Now they're just going to work a little clock. Harrell guarded by Dowdy. He's going to pull it out near midcourt. Now to Perkins. Perkins, as we already saw, good free throw oh, shooter. Wow. Good move. Smart. It's just smart basketball by the Senators. Yep. And they're being coached up on the sideline by Coach Wilson. Oh, what a dribble penetration. Oh. He couldn't get that to go down. Just rolled off the rim. Ball right back to Dover, though. That's exactly where he, that's exactly where it needed to go. Nice work there. By Perkins getting in the lane, putting it up off the glass, just didn't quite have the touch on that. Lucky, Sussex Central wasn't able to corral the rebound. Two minutes to go in this one. Good nice. bounce pass inside. Perkins to Harrell, give him 23, and it's a 17-point lead. Nice work. Shaheen. Flies. Again, pressure at midcourt, and it caused a turnover. It's not a whole lot of pressure, though. I mean, this is where, you know, Central's, I think, making the game faster than it really is and that it needs to be. In these situations, the game may be, it's going a little too fast for some of these younger guys. It's got to slow down. I take what the defense is giving you. It looks like they're going trying to go a little too fast. It's coming back to bite them. Hey, Pat, these two will meet again on the final regular season game, February 16th in Georgetown. But we'll see how much growth out of the Golden Knights between now early January and middle of February when they meet again. Yeah, exactly. I'm definitely curious to see with so many underclassmen on their roster being in key contributing uh, spots, you know, where are they at? I mean, they're, gonna, they're really going to come into their own as this season goes on. So. I'm curious to see where things are, and I'm curious to see where they're both at in the standings, too. Yeah. Because that could come down to playoff seeding right there. Yeah. Dover, yeah. with this win, we figure they're going to get it with a 17-point advantage. Yeah. They will move to 3-1. and one. Central will go to 2-2 two and two in the north. Now, Dover has this Thursday, they have, well, excuse me, yeah, Thursday they have Sussex Tech right here. Next week, Tuesday, they have Smyrna right here on this floor, and then they go on the road to Milford. And then coming up on January 17th, a big ball game right here against Polytech. The rematch, Dover yeah. lost to them earlier in the year by a final of 67 to 59. So looking forward to that rematch with Polytech. That could end up being for the Henlop and North title. It could end up being. That'll, that'll, be a, that'll definitely be one circle on the calendar. You know, you talked to Coach Wilson. He said they missed, I believe, 17 layups wow. in that game. Obviously, some of, you know, some of those are contested, but... Good you, penetration and a bucket by Watson. You could do the math there. Say you make half of those, it's a different ball game. Yeah. A little pressure on the ball. Dover beats it. They get it over on the wing, and now they'll pull it back out with 120 to go. And in, at some point, if you're Golden Knights, you probably got to start fouling, but not there. <laughs> no. Yeah, right there, he's got a little bit, little bit out of control. Kind of got away from him, but... Dover, they're going to get back. No yeah. need to foul either. Right. 17 up 15 points. Yep. Good call by Coach Wilson to call off the pressure, just get back and play half court D. Yeah, it's smart. No need to foul either. Don't foul any shooters. Dowdy from long range. 
I'll tell you what, Dowdy came out, he had his first two, and then went ice cold since. Yeah. Somebody told me he's in range as soon as he comes off the bus. There's a lay-in on a breakaway by Dover, and now they're up by 17 again at 59 to 42. That's the freshman going up and putting that one in. Yeah, who made that one? I'm looking at the clock. That was um, JV on Dennis. Okay, and there's a steal. Dennis Breakaway, again. Dennis again, giving four straight. And now the largest lead of the ball game for Dover as it's getting out of hand. Now 19-point advantage, 30 seconds to go. Fadeaway jump shot, no good by Maker, and Dover probably would just hold this, I would think. No need to take another shot. Watson commits the foul. That will send, I'm gonna send somebody to the line. Should, yeah, there he is. Number 13, Jackson Dixon. He's a freshman, 6'2", 175. Yeah, how about that? A couple freshmen on this roster for Dover. Young guys getting an opportunity playing these varsity games. Going to come up big as their careers go on, especially as the season goes on. You know, Coach Wilson's able to rely on some young guys. Really? Can so key it. to hit the front end of that one and one. And he almost banked the second one in. So a 20-point Dover lead with 18 seconds to go. Dowdy deep in the left corner, contested three balls up and no good, and Dover will just run out the clock. We're down to 10. I wouldn't think you foul again if you're the Golden Knights. They're going to back off the ball, and this one's going to be a final. A 20-point win for the Dover Senators. They snapped the Golden Knights' four-game winning streak, and Pat and I will be back to wrap this one up on the post-game show right after these messages on Delaware Live, powered by 302 Sports. The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard. Our neighbors, our schools, the places we go, and the people we know. And now there's one news outlet where our story is told. Delaware Live. Locally owned community-based news. Free to every reader. Because Delaware's future belongs to all of us. Quality journalism we can trust to help us take on the day. Delaware Live. Our state. Our news. Our home. Get the assurance that your HVAC system is what you need with Ambience. Ambience provides you with over 25 years of experience in the heating, cooling, and plumbing industry. The team at Ambience Heating and Air Conditioning provides high-quality residential HVAC installations, maintenance, and repairs in new and older homes in the Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Tri-State area. You may not realize it, but half of your energy costs go to heating and cooling. Make sure your energy dollars count and call us today for a free estimate. 302-239-HVAC. 302 302- 2239-4822. Hi, I'm Scott Cameron from Solo Concepts. Today we're at Fish On in the Villages of Five Points. Come check us out. Fish On is committed to serving beautiful, simple coastal cuisine in a cool atmosphere with a happening bar, spacious dining room, and outside patio. Popular dishes include the seafood stew and fresh oysters from the raw bar. Fish On's recently renovated event room and is the perfect spot for your next event. Fish On and Lewis in the Villages of Five Points open seven days a week. Best happy hour around. See you soon. Melissa Ellis is part of Four Acre Realty Company. She is licensed in both Delaware and Pennsylvania. Melissa knows that being personable and patient is a key to her success as a realtor. Helping both buyers and sellers understand current market values and conditions puts them in the best position when making an offer or pricing a home for sale. That kind of high-level professional communication and her skill at being a team player put Melissa's clients at ease, knowing she has their best interests at heart. Melissa is also an athlete herself, playing multiple sports so she understands what teamwork means. She is still involved in sports, whether it's sponsoring, coaching, or being team mom for her own two daughters' teams. What sets her apart is how grateful Melissa is for the trust of her clients. She never takes that trust for granted. She affords all people respect and honesty and works hard to be the support system clients need and deserve. Melissa Ellis, strong connections, strong service. Back here at Dover High School, where the final once again was Dover winning 62 to 40 to get a 20 point win. It was a 47 to 40, a seven point game midway through the third quarter. And then Dover responded right away. Let's get the leading scorers in the game. For the uh, Golden Knights, Watson had 12, seven points for Maker, six for Dowdy, and eight 
for McBride Allen. Leading the way for Dover, Harrell with 23. 14 for Denham Perkins. Six points for Jackson Dixon. And five points from Meek. Well, let's talk about quickly about Sussex Central. I think got off to a great start tonight, Pat. But uh, what went wrong after the first quarter? Uh, they kind of, they, you know, I think the, the the game got a little too fast for them. Dover put a little bit of pressure on them, and there were some turnovers in the open court uh, that I think allowed you know Dover to get out and get some easy layups in transition. And then there were some lapses on the defensive end of the floor, not knowing where guys were, kind of losing guys in the half court there and that allowed you know Dover to get some easy layups into the lane as that game progressed um, and that's all stuff that you could progress on as the season goes on as these guys start to get more and more the game experience those are things you end up picking up on they, those instincts start coming to you a lot quicker next thing you know you're tightening the door you're tightening the doors the doorways for these teams to get into the lane on you and you're also not turning the ball over giving them easy layups in transition once again, these two will meet in the final regular season game, the rematch in Georgetown. Uh, that'll be at Sussex Central. When you talk about the Golden Knights, you have to talk about the sophomores. Maker's a sophomore. Dowdy's a sophomore. Cannon's a sophomore. And then you got some juniors sprinkled in there, McBride, Allen, and Custis. Yep. And then you got the experience with the senior, Jameel West, uh, Weston. Watson, excuse me. Now let's talk about the Dover Senators and Coach Wilson. And uh, obviously, when you talk Dover, you talk Harrell and Perkins. But they've got some depth off that bench. They do. I and, mean, you know, they, they got guys that could come out there and at least handle the basketball at the very least, right? Nassim Cosme uh, being being one of those guys in particular. But then, you know, you got Abrams, you got Jackson Dixon, you've got Dennis as well. And then you go down low, you've got, you know, Norwood, you've got Allen, you've got Meek. Those guys can make plays down on the post. So you've got a, a good core of players there. And I'll tell you what, Coach Wilson's got a nice, um, you know, nice rotation of guys there. Despite losing two of his, his key contributors from last year's team, yeah. he's able to replace them with some young guys. The Senators group's going to continue to formulate and come together. I think the key, though, is, is Jaheim Harrell. He yeah. makes that offense move. We saw it tonight. When he's off the floor, you know, they, they sometimes get a little scatter shot offensively. They tightened up tonight on defense, but yeah. offensively they can get a little bit scatter shot. He is the key to this engine. Both of these teams back in action Thursday night. The Golden Knights will host Polytech, who leads the Henlopen North. And then the Senators will be right back here on their floor Thursday night with a 6.30 tip against Sussex Tech. That will wrap this one up here from Dover High School. For Nick Halliday and Pat Gariantes, I'm Glenn Fraser saying so long from Dover High. Once again, the final score, 62-42, to 42, Dover over Sussex Central. Have a great night, everybody. And thank you. The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard. Our neighbors, our schools, the places we go, and the people we know. And now there's one news outlet where our story is told. Delaware Live. Locally owned, community-based news. Free to every reader. Because Delaware's future belongs to all of us. Quality journalism we can trust to help us take on the day. Delaware Live. Our state. Our news. Our home.